all and welcome back. I hope everyone is doing really well. Some interesting stuff to cover again today. I want to look at the wider cryptocurrency market and in particular what's been happening over on Ethereum and Bitcoin because these could be the makings of the next driver for mass amounts of adoption or mass amounts of capital to flow back into the cryptocurrency space. And of course, off the back of that, and based on the cycles that we know and love, we could see a lot of the major altcoins, Hedera included, performing incredibly well as a direct result of what is currently happening. Taking a look at the Fear Ingredient Index firstly, though, we can see we're back into the neutral territory of 52. Yesterday as well, 51, whereas last week we were in the greed zone of 64. And this is because we have seen massive sell-offs across the board um, for majority of cryptocurrency projects. And some of that as well is being driven by what is happening with meme coins at the moment on the likes of Ethereum or ERC-20 based meme coins. A lot of capital is flowing out of blue chip projects, projects like Bitcoin, Ethereum, even Hedera, ADA, XRP, whatever it may be. They're all flowing out and flowing into meme coins at the moment as everyone is trying to get the hottest and greatest next best thing. One thing to say, though, is we're still fairly high on the fear and greed index compared to what we've previously seen when we've bottomed out. If we look back into, say, June of 2022, when the markets were incredibly bearish, we were down as low as, you know, high teen or low teens, 13, 11, somewhere around there in terms of the fear and greed index. So we're still sitting pretty high at the moment. Although that being said, there does appear to be more and more on the macro side of confidence building back up. We're seeing this over in the United States as inflation continues to fall. The Fed potentially is looking at some of their last rate hikes to take place. We will then see interest rates hold steady perhaps throughout the remainder of 2023 and then maybe towards the end of 2023 or beginning of 2024, we'll start to see those interest rates fall and that would be a great signal for risk on assets to take favour again amongst not only institutions but very large retail investors as well. The interesting stuff happening recently, though, is Michael Saylor uh, comment about ordinals are a catalyst for Bitcoin adoption. And what he's talking about as well is the likes of this. We saw Binance temporarily closing Bitcoin withdrawals as the Bitcoin network experiences a huge congestion issue. The team is currently working on a fix until the network is stabilized and will reopen Bitcoin withdrawals as soon as possible. Ordinals just exposed that Bitcoin's block space is actually a very scarce asset. I wouldn't say it's one of the most scarcest assets on planet Earth, according to this guy on Twitter, but buckle up indeed, because things like this reaffirm value for the likes of cryptocurrency projects, even antiquated ones such as Bitcoin. And nevertheless, despite the fact that Bitcoin isn't great in terms of like an enterprise use case compared to something like Hedera going forward, it puts the spotlight back on cryptocurrencies. And as we all know, we want a larger cryptocurrency market cap across the board because then we see the equity flow down into the blue chip altcoin projects like Hedera. So in short, the, the TLDR effectively of this situation is bit like Bitcoin grabs the spotlight again. We start seeing it. We see money flow back into the markets and then we see all of our favorite altcoin projects pump as a direct result of that taking place. Many of you are probably wondering, though, what the hell ordinals are and what's actually happened effectively. So the first thing to know is what um, Bitcoin NFTs now are. So Bitcoin ordinals, also known as digital artifacts, are a way to inscribe digital content on the Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin ordinals protocol was launched in January of this year, and the protocol allows inscribing of digital content like art onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Unlike a traditional non-fungible token on Ethereum or Hedera, though, um, they wanted to create an immutable on-chain presence of a piece of art, text or video. The Genesis Ordinal was a pixel art of a skull that Rod Armour inscribed on December 14th, 2022. As the NFT space based on Ethereum's ERC721 standard skyrocketed in 2021, Rod Armour, who was a programmer and an artist, saw the opportunity to create a similar yet unique experience on the Bitcoin blockchain. His solution was Bitcoin Ordinals. Ordinal theory concerns itself with Satoshis, which is the largest denomination, oh, sorry, the smallest denomination of a Bitcoin. So whatever it is, like one Satoshi being one one millionth of a Bitcoin or whatever the actual uh, metric is. Uh, but basically this allows the individual identities to give them to be tracked, transferred and imbued with meaning at a smaller denomination than just a Bitcoin. So the number of inscriptions doubled every week for a few weeks. However, the number could have been much larger if the infrastructure to inscribe and trade ordinals had been better planned and executed. So the idea being here is by being a unit of transaction, Satoshis can be inscribed with that digital content to make up Bitcoin ordinals. 
they become immutable digital collectibles that can be transacted on the Bitcoin network using Bitcoin wallets. So again, without going into too much detail of what actually is happening here, effectively, Bitcoin has finally got NFTs and that has been driving a lot of activity on the Bitcoin network as everyone wants Bitcoin NFTs, apparently. What that's caused, though, is the mining reward for mining a block had actually or has become lower than the transaction fee for producing that block. So I think it was around six, six Bitcoin um, or 6.2 Bitcoin, say, to mine the entire block in terms of transaction fees. But the reward the miners received for mining that block was lower than what was paid out in transaction fees. So obviously talking there about why space on the Bitcoin blockchain is becoming a very, very scarce asset because of how everything is lining up. We're not just seeing that, though. Another failed blockchain like Domino's Cardano is currently in 94 percent load. Only 6% left until Cardano is at maximum capacity. When it hits 100% load, transactions will then actually be queued alongside everyone else. Meanwhile, Hedera, of course, is pumping 80 million transactions in 24 hours, and it's just like a drop in the bucket. So we can see the differences here beginning to merge from these different chains and themselves. And I think the key difference to make here is that Bitcoin being a store of value, realistically, it's not going to win any awards in terms of the technology for facilitating new things going forward into the future. But having issues with block, uh, block space on Bitcoin is probably a positive for the value of Bitcoin and will drive forward Bitcoin even further as a scarce asset. But when you juxtapose that to, say, proof of stake chains like Cardano or Hedera, having maximum block space being achieved or taken up almost to the point of where you're queuing transactions is actually a massive negative. So there's two different categories here that I see between them. You've got proof of work, i.e. basically Bitcoin versus the rest of the space of proof of stake. Um, and one for one is a positive and one for the other is a negative. And it's very important to see the distinction between that. Anyone paying attention as well, Hedera just broke its own record for daily transactions, knocking at the door of nearly a thousand transactions per second on average, with over 80 million total for the day. Most of the transactions coming from value add use cases outside speculation, ignore at your own risk. And we can see there a screenshot from Metrica looking about what's been happening recently. And of course, there are more and more use cases always coming live across to Hedera. Some more bullish news as well is that CoinSpot has recently just listed Hedera and they've got a spotlight section uh, talking about it. So Hedera Hashgraph some different information. I believe they've just listed it, but they've got this spotlight nevertheless about Hedera sustainability. Hedera puts sustainability first with the average kilowatt per transaction. So this is educating retail investors as to what the project is and how it stands out from the rest, which of course, again, is very important for adoption and getting people to understand how powerful this is as a DLT layer. Hedera as well, hold on to your hat from Arkia. They saw 245% increase in new unique visitors to Arkia.io back in April. It's clear Hedera is growing rapidly and we're seeing more developers interested in building scalable and reliable decentralized applications across on Hedera. Hello future with a funny meme here. Hedera's fast, safe and cheap DAP experience. Objects in mirror, of course, closer than they actually appear. And that's coming from an EVM user or Ethereum virtual machine user. Some very big stuff, of course, happening on Hedera in terms of interoperability between the different chains. And again, that drives forward the experience. Not only that, one of the other big use cases, Timeless, have just released a demo of their trusted tokenization solution, monitoring clean energy generation of a solar farm in real time and providing the operator with RECs or renewable energy certificates for each megawatt hour of energy generated. And of course, that is all built on top of Hedera and utilizing and leveraging the Hedera consensus service in order to create these things like RECs, uh, which then help them offset the carbon footprint of whatever energy they are generating, or how they're generating their energy. And that's, of course, what an REC is. We've spoken about this before at length on the channel in terms of how important or how large the ESG uh, market will be in the future and how big it already is, because of course it is a global driven action. Just look at how things are moving along with, say, renewable energy for electric vehicles uh, in the UK and Europe in general, even in, in the States of where there's massive initiatives, particularly in Europe for say 2025 or 2030, that no combustion or internal combustion engines will be produced. It'll be electric vehicles only. The demand for energy is only going to increase and the demand for an offset uh, renewable energy or electricity in general that's renewable 
is of course a main narrative for the globe as we see at the moment. And things like Hedera Hashcraft will help track um, and fairly price those different energy units going forward into the future. A massive, massive industry that's going to continue growing uh, for sure. Before I wrap up this video, then I wanted to quickly look at this new Hedera improvement proposal as well, as it's a bit of a dichotomy when we talk about uh, value on Hedera, but nevertheless, it's still very, very important to help uh, Hedera grow into the future. So creating atomic transactions uh, chain uh, HIP draft or HIP draft. So this HIP defines a mechanism to execute batch transactions such that a series of transactions or happy calls, HOPI calls, depending on each other, can be rolled into just a single transaction that passes the ACID test, atom acidity, uh, consistency, isolation, and durability. The, existence impl the existing implementation of transactions in the Hedera network doesn't currently allow for multiple different happy transactions to be called in a single network transaction that would have all the ACID properties. This makes it impossible to create more complicated flows without using smart contracts, which do not support all the happy transactions at this point, and listening to the mirror node to check the status of the previous transaction. This way, we can also achieve an abstraction away from smart contracts. So the idea here effectively is to create a Hedera improvement proposal that allows transactions to be rolled up or calls to be rolled up into a single transaction. Let's say I need to make 10 different calls. Currently, you'd have to do that via something like smart contracts and make several different transactions. They want to replace that by just being able to execute a single transaction. The naysayers immediately will turn around and say, well, we're basically going to have fewer transactions on Hedera as a result. Yes, that's technically true from this perspective. However, the proportion of, say, happy calls that are making up the transaction volume on Hedera is absolutely minuscule anyway. But the benefit far exceeds the drawback in this instance, because as we can see here, this achieves abstraction away from smart contracts in general and relies more on the native consensus services of Hedera in order to do this. So, OK, we lose a couple of transactions here or there. It's not going to make a dent in what, say, um, Atma.io is achieving on a regular basis because, of course, they are using the consensus service to log that information. We'll just be rolling up API or happy calls um, into single transactions. Really big Hedera improvement proposal. And again, this makes building on Hedera easier, faster, and also cheaper for the developers, which then means we see more high-grade applications come across, things like decentralized apps, maybe even DEXs and stuff alike. This drives forward the space in general. One last thing I wanted to say though, before I do actually wrap this video up, is if I look on something like Twitter or even Reddit, or maybe you guys are seeing it across in Discord servers, we see a lot of people are talking about coins such as Pepe or other meme coins that are currently on fire right now on the Ethereum space at ERC20 based things. This is nothing new. We saw this back in 2020 on the Binance smart chain because of where there were very low fees. It becomes incredibly easy for someone just to spin up a meme coin um, and then you know, basically rug pull it once they get the chance. I think I've already seen somewhere that the creators of Pepe coin have already walked away with $14 million each. So there are three of them uh, in total and they've completely sort of abandoned uh, their early investment. The only people that tend to win with these particular meme coins are the ones that get in incredibly early. Now, I'm not saying that you should then go and find coins that are, you're incredibly early because the likelihood is majority of those coins are complete scams as well. They're complete rug pulls. I've seen this, I've experienced this back on the Binance Smart Chain where everyone and their mother is trying to jump into these projects as early as they can to try and turn $10 or $100 into 100 million. It's not going to happen, guys. You know, have a bit of a reality check. Unfortunately, this is part of the crypto space though, where there is obviously a lack of validation across. It enables things like this to happen very, very easily. And I wouldn't get sucked up into the momentum that these meme coins are currently seeing. We've seen it again in the past. It's just a fad and it does blow over. Sure, some people will make money in the short term if they hit it lucky, but this is effectively akin to gambling in my perspective. Um, not saying that majority of the people that watch these particular videos are, are too interested in something like this, but we've seen it all before. Here's another tweet talking about SafeMoon, who was one of the ones that started it back on the Binance Smart Chain back in, I think it was 2020, something along those lines. But unfortunately, the majority of people that try and jump into these things are going to get significantly burnt and are probably going to walk away with absolutely nothing. And not only that, will leave themselves disillusioned with the cryptocurrencies in general, because if this is their first experience um, of dealing with cryptocurrencies, jumping into a meme coin and then walking away with nothing, you know, you're not really going to be looking into much else when it comes to crypto. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment. I do try and get around to as many of them as I possibly can. 
liking and sharing these videos helps me out massively as well. And you can, of course, always subscribe to get notified for future videos. Until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.